my cat is out front. I have not seen this cat for six months, probably. Let's see if she comes to me. That's Hello, Linda. baby. Hello, baby. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi. Hello, Angel. Hello, Angel. Hello. Hello. Oh, you've got a collar on you. You have a collar on you now. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, goodness. Here comes the flop. Don't touch her for that. There she is. Not flopping nearly as easily as the, she used to. Oh, I was worried that something had happened to her because we hadn't seen her in such a long time. Oh, she's so pretty. Yes. Oh, she's beautiful. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I want to keep her. Oh, she's so pretty. Aren't you a pretty girl? Pretty girl. Pretty girl. So today, Kevin is going to start on the Terminator. This is a Metal Earth kit. It is a premium series. It's the T-800 Endoskeleton. Endoskeleton. And this is, let me see if I can get a close-up on that. The hardest level you can do. The get. hardest level. Have you done one that's the I hardest level? I think I've level? done one more. Yeah. Hold on, let me. Okay. So, I'm going to show you how this starts out. Kevin's going to oh, open it. Sure. Yeah. Because if you're new to the channel, if you've never seen these, you're like, what is a metal earth kit? Well, they are flat pieces of metal. And... They, they become 3D? They become 3D. And um, Kevin's uh, been saving this one for a time where he has some time. This will probably take him several days. Yeah. He, um, it's the thickest instruction book I've ever seen. He, uh, this will take him several <laughs> days to work on. What was the last man you did? Was it a? It was Iron, a robot. Was from, it an Iron Man? No, or, it was or a just, robot from uh, Mandalorian. It was uh, that. It was that killer bot. That's right. The and it took two days. Uh, yeah. So I would say this will take a couple of days as well. And look how little the pieces are. The pieces are really, really small. So this is how it starts out. You have to have a lot of patience for these kits. I do not. Uh, you have to be able to follow instructions, at which, you know, you I, I, I can follow instructions when I want to. But, um, yeah, this is just something. And, and you have to have your vision. I mean, uh, Kevin has a light attached to his computer, um, to his monitor, um, so that he can see. And uh, it's a lot of little bitty teeny tiny parts. So. And I have my times three glasses, reading glasses on, so I can actually see them. And you also have to be careful too, because you have these teeny parts, and then Kevin will every once in a while he'll it, flick one in the floor. Oh yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, where is it in the floor? And I try to keep it over here, but sometimes it just dry, it bounces. Yeah, so it's nice if you have one of these mats great big kind. mats to work on. While we were on vacation, Ashley read this book. It's called The Silent Patient, and it's by Alex Mick. How would you say his last name, Kevin? How would you say Michaelides or Michael? Michaelides. 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 Um, I don't know how to say his last name. Um, here's a picture of him on the back. There he is, uh, and I don't know if it's. I don't know if that's focusing or not. That probably wasn't even in focus. But the, the name of the book is The Silent Patient. So, Ashley read it. She started it. Uh, she read a lot of it while we were sitting on the beach. And um, I, when she was out in the water at one point, I read just the, the, like, the little forward in it. And I thought, that sounds like a really interesting book. Well, then she finished it. Ashley's a very, very fast reader. She always has been. She's one of these kids where we would go to Barnes & Noble and we would buy her like three Junie B. Jones books and she was done with them, you know, in a few hours. And uh, she asked me not too long ago, she said that probably really annoyed you that you all spent $10 a piece on these books or whatever they were and that I read them so quickly. And I said, actually, no, it never did annoy me because I thought it was the neatest thing 
to have a child that liked to read. And I enjoyed buying books for her. I think Kevin enjoyed buying books for her. It was a fun thing for us to do going in Joseph Beth. Joseph Beth, um, we haven't been in Joseph Beth in years and years because the closest book, actual bookstore to us is Barnes and Noble. And I like Barnes and Noble a lot. I like what they carry and everything. The thing that's different about our Joseph Beth is it's just a neat building. So it's on like two different levels and it has these escalators going down the center of it. And it's just a really neat, it's on the, there's a like a pond on the edge of it. So it's just, it's in a neat area. So it's fun to go in there because it's laid out differently, not necessarily because of what they carry, but because of the building itself. But we enjoyed, uh, we would go on like a Saturday and we would go in Joseph Beth and we would uh, spend hours uh, in the children's section because it was this huge section and, um, and there was just a lot to look at and it was neat having a child that really liked to read. So it never bothered me to buy her books and her finish them, you know, in that afternoon because I just thought it was cool, you know? She, um, from the get-go, was, um, I knew that she was just really, really smart, and that was neat for me to witness because I was never that kid. I was always the kid that had to study, you know, five spelling words each night to get to the end of the week to be able to pass the spelling test. Ashley never had to study for the spelling test. You know, she was that kid that never had to study. So it's just two different people. She took after Kevin, Andrew took after me. <laughs> but Andrew, I have, do have to say, um, Andrew's smart too, but Andrew has a great memory. Andrew has an awesome memory um, and can quote things. And uh, so both of my kids have smarts that I never had, which I just think is neat. Anyway, back to the book, uh, The Silent Patient. She read this book in just no time at all. And then she asked, she told me, she said, you know, if you're interested, you need to read this book. And so I started reading it, not realizing that it is London based and that a lot of the places he mentions are in London and I recognize the names of so many of these places just because when Kevin and I have gone, especially the last time we went, we went to a lot of different parks and places like that. And it's good to go to those places because then you're not just going to the touristy places. And I think the touristy places are terrific to go to. I think everybody should, should go to the touristy places. But then I would also try to go to the places. I like to go where the normal people, the people who live there, I like to pretend like I live there. So I want to go to the park where they go to the park. I want to go to the grocery store where they go to the grocery store. Um, you know, I want to experience things like that. Um, the first year we went, uh, we sent postcards, some postcards out. And it was nice to go in a post office where the British are going to the post office. Um, but so it was really cool uh, that a lot of the places that were mentioned in here, um, I recognized. But uh, he, the author, actually lives in London. He was born and raised in Cyprus. And it says he has an MA in English Literature from Trinity College, Cambridge University, and an MA in Screenwriting from the American Film Institute in Los Angeles. Um, this is his first novel. And it says it spent more than a year on the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, so, I had not heard of it. This would have never been on my radar. So I was so glad that I actually got it. It is a fantastic book. It is also an easy read. This is one that I would say is a good summer book. If you want something to lay out by the pool or um, take on vacation with you, if you are one of these people who likes to read on a plane or a bus or whatever, this is an excellent, excellent book. And it's uh, it's just, it's interesting, 
from start to finish. This is an interesting book. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, there are some surprises in it. Um, very, very good. Um, and it is like a, it's, it's like a, it is a thriller. They're describing it on, um, Entertainment Weekly described it as an unforgettable and Hollywood bound new thriller, a mix of Hitchcockian suspense, Agatha Christie plotting and Greek tragedy. This is one that I could totally see becoming a movie. They, they could turn this into a movie really easy. And, um, I have not searched yet to see if he's written anything else. But I would totally be willing to read something else uh, that he wrote. Because he, he did a fantastic job. Um, I also, I cannot remember if I mentioned uh, the movie Luca to you. It is a Disney movie. It was wonderful. It was so good. And if I have mentioned it to you, you'll just have to forgive me. Because uh, where we went on vacation and stuff like that, I've just forgotten what I mentioned and what I happened. Luca is one of those Disney movies that you don't want to miss. Um, also, we watched, uh, we had seen Peter Rabbit, but we had not seen Peter Rabbit 2. Uh, James Corden does, which I love him, he does the voice of Peter Rabbit. It was cute. I was worried at the very, very beginning that it was going to be um, terrible. I was just worried. It wasn't. It was a cute movie. It was a very cute. I'm glad we watched it. Um, and I swear to you, I don't know. Now, I brought this up. I should have. I'm going to look this up really quick. In the very, very beginning of Peter Rabbit, uh, the, this couple is getting married. I would have sworn that the woman was Winona Ryder. Now, I'm telling you, she, okay, her name is Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne is her name. And in this movie, in the beginning, they're in this wedding scene, I thought, that's Winona Ryder. It's not. It's Rose Byrne. She's been in Bridesmaids, um, Spy, Insidu Insidious, Neighbors, um, yeah, I just, uh, and heck, she could have been in the first Peter Rabbit movie. I just don't remember. We hadn't seen the first one in so long that I didn't remember. But I'm telling you, she, she looks, she, she and Winona Ryder could be sisters. We are on our way out to my sister's house. She, um, I had mentioned in a vlog way back that she planned on getting new siding. And so, uh, the siding came in. And today's the day that they are ripping uh, the old stuff off the house. And then I guess they're going to put the new stuff on tomorrow. So we're on our way because I thought that you all would be interested to see what it looks like uh, when they take the old stuff off. So uh, she um, uh, showed me a little bit of it uh, through a text but uh, I can't wait to see it in person. So, I forgot to tell you also, Jennifer got a new car. Jennifer got rid of her old car. What did you have before, Jennifer? Just a, a Jeep Cherokee. A Jeep Cherokee, and she moved up to a Grand Cherokee. And what do you think? I, I should have gotten the Grand Cherokee in the first place. So, you, you like it a lot better. Oh, yeah. It's bigger, and it's... it's it, you know, it's got all the bells and whistles. It's got the heated seats and... You didn't have heated seats before? No. Oh, I love it's, it's heated got seats. It's leather and it's got the little lights that come on when somebody's riding beside you. And... Uh, speaking of heated seats, one of my favorite thing about the room in Hawaii, there was a heated toilet seat. Ashley and I loved it. Really? Oh, Oh, Jennifer, it was a heated toilet seat. I've never... It was... Oh, it, what do you, you need a heated toilet seat? Because you don't realize how good it is until you've had it. I, did, I never realized... I think I would have a hot flash. Oh, it was I wonderful. Me, uh... Yeah, because I have hot flashes anyway, so it wouldn't take much. So let me remind you what the color, what Jennifer's house looks like. And there's a whole video of Jennifer's house, but I want to show you. This is all the, the supplies, the siding and stuff. And you can see they're in the back ripping it off. So, uh, what did you say we'd be able to see the new color or the? What yeah, did you? Oh. The new color over here. 
oh, it's going to be a lot darker, but I like it. Yeah. I really do like that. And then they're going to take, uh, I just talked to him, they're going to take my white poles off. Yes. And they're going to put thicker ones that are square. The post. They're going to be stained colored. That'll be nice, and too. And then the brick right here. Right. Um, on red, they're going to cover it the same color as the vinyl. They leave the tops white. Oh, that'll be really nice. Yeah. So can you see it in the back where they... Took it down, yeah. Okay. So this is what it looks like when they pull the siding off. Old and scary. I'm sure this is exactly what ours would look like underneath, Jennifer. So did you say that you all were gonna to uh, paint? I didn't see you there, baby. The bottom? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if we're going to or not. Because back here, it would look good if we did that back here. I think so. But um, there's some repairs that need to be made, like the cracks and stuff. Right. Um, but once I hang those picture things up on the side of the house, yeah, that'll look we good. Put, um, the bushes, what do you call them bushes that everybody has? The box, box, yeah. Once we put the boxwoods right there, you're not gonna see any of it, right? So I don't know if I'm gonna to do it or not. There's the babies. We found a snake skin. Out in the front yard, a fresh snake skin. Oh. And it had a blunt tail. What does that mean? Blunt tail is not good. Blunt tail means I'm a copperhead. Oh. Um, but. I but, see your garden. Yeah, it's huge. That's our corn and all that. And it looks like there's some stuff in front of that building, what too. There's right there in front of that, that tack building, there's stuff. It looks like... That's weed. Oh, okay. Weed oh, okay. So this but is the garden. Me, what's really neat, we have a mink living down there. A mink? A mink. It's uh, either a mink or a weasel. Uh -huh. Because we have watched it, and it's living underneath that building. And they're long, uh -huh. and they're skinny. Uh -huh. It's solid brown and has a long tail, and when it runs, it sort of does, like hops like this oh really yes so that could have also been a culprit of one or two of our chickens getting killed right and uh, jennifer has new chickens too yeah you want to walk down here you sure can sure we can see them there's a little door on the side oh yeah. okay hello 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 lester back. um well enough to drive you insane. what happened to to lester tell everybody because we haven't talked about lester um yeah, Lester had a, a fight or something. And a dog. The There's uh, people who live in over here. Um, in, in a neighborhood. In a neighborhood, and they let their dog out. And he's actually a friendly dog, but he has gotten the taste for killing chickens and stuff like that. And apparently he grabbed a hold of Lester and he ran with Lester in his mouth all the way over to the neighborhood. Which is crazy. Um, Lester ended up getting away from him, but he ripped all of his feathers out. That's actually new feather growth. Because oh. it was bald. He didn't have nothing. Right. And that's actually the new feathers coming out. And Lester won the battle and lived. This is mom. She doesn't lay eggs anymore. She's completely stopped laying eggs. And um, So she's just living her best life. She's just living her best life, <laughs> and she is a turd because she's attacked everything we got. Let me see if I can get them to come out. Um, come out. We're keeping them locked up today. Oh, I think you should. Um, because the people are here. Right. And what I've been doing is when I've been going to work, we keep them locked up, and then um, when I come home from work, we let them out. Right. And that whole building right there is going to be one big coop. We're putting all big boxes in there. It's a big building. They'll have, and then we're putting a huge, this isn't big. This isn't big because we've always let them free run. Right. You have, didn't have, have to worry about it. run out back. Right. This building. So they'll have a huge run and we won't have to worry about them getting out and getting killed anymore. Oh, look. Her feet, the, the white one's feet. Are fuzzy. 
Yeah, they're fuzzy. And she doesn't have a cone on her head, if you notice. So she sort of looks like an eagle almost. Yeah, Kevin, did you see her face? Um, the other one in front of her is what they call molting. And when they go through a molt, they look like um, holy hell because they lose feathers <laughs> right, and stuff like that. Right, right. She's molting. Uh, the gray one's actually beautiful, too. Uh, yes, And it's we very have no pretty. idea what kind of chickens these are. We have no idea. And the other one's in their hut. And we think he is a rooster. Um, and I can try to get him to come out. Yeah, they went to this farm and, and to get these, and they were just scooping them up. And so they think they accidentally scooped up a rooster. Yeah, see, it's, it's, our feet are dirty because it's been raining and stuff. Yes. But she's got like fuzz and feathers all down the ground. And let me, let me see if I can get this. Yeah, we don't, we just don't want to let it out. No, say, you, you. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, she's going to try to get it to come out the door. The, oh, look. Come on. Come on. Oh, we got eggs. Oh, that's good. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hello! Jennifer, have you named him? No. But he looks like a rooster. Uh, yeah. He needs to be cleaned off. He, that's a rooster because he, he has the like same thing on his head that Luster has. Uh, well, so does that one. Yeah, oh, we, that one does too, though. Yeah, but we, we almost thought he was a rooster. But because he looks like he's the same exact bird that she is. Yes. But maybe she's the female and he's the male. But his butt's dirty. We gotta clean him. Do you clean them? Do you give them a bath? You get what, they can get what they call pasty butt and stuff. And yeah, we'll clean them. And more trouble than it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> then the two eggs we got sitting in there right now. Up on there first, and then put the side on top. Oh, I see. They're covering yeah, I guess that they're one. Doing one area at a time instead of. Taking everything off the whole house, they're gonna do it. They'll yeah, side they'll do like the, the back side because once they do all the sides, then they have to do the corner pieces and all that. But stuff. I hope they realize they gotta get up there on that damn roof. Yeah. Get that top part of there. Oh, you said, oh, you said, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. So this is uh, day two, and this is how it looks. I'll take you around here. This is how it looks. Oh, that looks really nice. That, that piece right there is off because they cut right there. They're going to fix all Right. That. So you can see the difference between uh, down at the bottom and the top. It's a lot darker, but I, I do love it, Jennifer. So we're back out at Jennifer's and they have had a lot of work done. They had the roof pressure washed. Jennifer, how much, if you don't mind, how much did that cost? Uh, $400. $400. And you can already see that there's new dirt on it, but we have so many trees around. Right, there's a lot of trees. But this roof looks brand new. It looks beautiful. The, the red is so vibrant and bright. It looks gorgeous. And then they had their four posts. Jennifer, you can talk about your posts. Oh, they're cedar. They're red cedar. So they, they took down the old ones completely? That, well, they only had two posts. Okay. Two little ones on each end. For some reason, the people who lived here before took out the two main posts in the middle. And the guys that I, I hired to put the post up were like, you're lucky that your porch is still standing. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I don't know why they did that. Right. So we, we had the two posts put in, and um, it's red cedar, which cedar is like it don't rot. It's the best wood you can get. Um, the only thing about cedar is um, you have to make sure that you put a good oil, oil base coating of silver on it because cedar will turn gray completely gray. Oh, I didn't know that. But by putting that coating on it, it keeps it from... Do you have to do that like once a year? No, you, it actually probably every two or three years. Oh, okay. But I might do it once a year simply because how long is it going to take to put that coating on? Right, exactly. It won't take 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, it won't take 10 minutes. So you painted the tops of the posts white. And the bottoms are the same color as the vinyl. I think it looks terrific. And then we'll show you the side too. Oh, and she has this sunflower growing 
that's going to be really tall. So when it blooms, oh, we'll gosh, try to. Back in the garden are But it's hot. You probably can't. I know you can't tell from the video. Like 90 degrees. It's very hot. Oh, the, John's doing work. So he took off this. Um, they took the phone. Uh, the, there was an old phone um, box there. They took that off the house. He took the the uh, the deck off, and now he's gone to Lowe's actually to buy supplies, and he's going to put up a new deck. Well, um, that box that's on the side of it really didn't even need to be there. We have no home phone. We have no AT&T at all. Right. We go through Spectrum. But um, when the guys did the vinyl, they hung that back up there. So John's going to take that off. But we had the whole bottom all the way around the house painted a slightly lighter color than the house itself. And then we hung those pictures up to cover where they had cinder blocks here instead of this stone right here. Right, and those are from Hobby Lobby. Yeah, Hobby Lobby. And then uh, John's going to cover this. Even though it doesn't look so bad now that it's painted, we're actually going to get a metal, like, cast iron door that opens and shuts to go right here because I th think that'll look good. And that's a different way to get under the house to get to the water. It does blend in. Yeah, it does now. Yeah. So, do you have anything growing in your garden now? Oh, God. You do? We've got uh, peaches and cream corn. We've got banana peppers. We've got five different types of tomatoes. We've got squash. We've got zucchini. We've got huge sunflowers up there. Um, next year, I'm doing pumpkins. I Don't give can't. a crap what John thinks if we're doing pumpkins. <laughs> well, they, they take up space. They take up a lot of space. They do. And we'll be getting bull calves. Probably about six calves bulls um next year calves yes and what you do is you buy them as calves fatten them up and sell them off and um so he didn't want to do the pumpkins because he's like i'm gonna have to block that whole area off when you do the pumpkins right so the calves can't get in there right but um that's what we're gonna do because you can sell them and if we make a thousand dollars a piece off of them that's six thousand bucks you know right that, that you're making you're not talking about the pumpkins you're talking about the calves, the calves. I thought you were now, the pumpkins, if i did pumpkins what i would do is i would literally put a sign out here at the front yard come and pick a pumpkin four or five bucks people love right. that crap come yes they do pumpkin. yeah that would be you fun because i'm not going to need them all but i have every intention of having about 50 on my front porch next year right oh so yeah so orange it glows yeah so here's Lester. Oh, here's more. This one's, uh, she's staying cool down in the dirt. Yes, they, they roll around in dirt. That helps them keep mites off of them. They take dirt baths. <laughs> Look, they're all over here. There's four of them right here. Yeah, and that's uh, that's my favorite. Well, besides Lester. My, the, she's my favorite. I like her feet. She looks like, like she's wearing feet. boots. And she don't have a cone on her head, if you notice. Right, no, she doesn't. She looks like an eagle or something. She does look like she's wearing little boots, though. <laughs> yes, I think, I don't know for a fact, but I think she's called an Easter chicken. Well, somebody can but let us know. I could be completely wrong about that. Mm hmm yeah, but they love it in here because they stay in the dirt and roll around. We've walked back here because I told Jennifer I hadn't actually walked back in the back to see her garden. So, uh, so we're on our way. But the garden, you have to want to go to the garden now, let me tell you, because it's, it's back. It's back pretty far. So here is her first sunflower. It's little and it's got a bee on it. The, where the man next door does honeybees. I honestly, I could be wrong, but I that, I think it's a honeybee, and I think it's pollinating on my sunflowers. And uh, look at all of them; they're gonna come, Tammy. Oh, they're everywhere. So sunflowers are a late summer flower. Well, you you would have already had to have planted them by now. Right. Um, our cabbage did look not do at good. That. It did not get, do good at all. Is that what that is, is cabbage? It yeah. looks like something's been eating it. Yes, that's what, um, the, this whole row, we haven't tilled or anything because the cabbage didn't do good. Is it because they needed more water? No, what? bugs got to it. Okay. Um, green tomatoes. Look got. at the tomatoes. Kevin loves a fried green tomato. You wanna pick some? 
tons you of You want a picture? I'm going to take them with you. <laughs> Jennifer's like, please, take no, some. Look at, look at them. Look at them, Tammy. Oh, you have a bunch. Yes, pick them. Pick them as many. Yeah, he loves fried green tomatoes. Um, you, have, you do have a lot of tomatoes. Yeah, just pick them. Get them. But what is this right here? It's bell peppers. And look. Oh my gosh, Jennifer! It's a baby <gasps> bell pepper. Oh my look. gosh, look how cute! They're so cute. <laughs> bell pepper. And will those grow to be regular? <gasps> I see banana peppers. Yeah, banana peppers. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. I can smell them. Can you smell those, Jennifer? <laughs> Look, look at the baby ones to eat too. Yeah, if you want some banana peppers, pick them. Pick them. Pick oh them. my goodness. Now, the squash and zucchini hasn't come out yet. John planted it later, but it's starting to come out. Is this what this is? A squash? Yeah, see, pumpkin, pumpkins will remind you a lot of this, Jennifer. Oh, I see them. That's sticky. Oh, see them growing? Yes. And they're eating that better than squash and zucchini yeah a uh, zucchini bread yeah this is all green beans and we have picked and picked and picked them so they might be do you put uh, ham in your green beans or how do you make I yours like ham pieces yeah you do and john puts a little bit of bacon grease and um like a teaspoon of sugar right yeah so when we talk about vegetables that just doesn't mean that we're eating them like uh, the healthiest <laughs> We're, we're no, still it's southern cooking, and when we talk about zucchini bread, we're talking about with lots of butter. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's southern cooking. Yeah, it's bacon grease on everything. <laughs> it, food ain't good without bacon grease. <laughs> Cornbread, you make it with bacon. Grease. Yes, you do. Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah. So look, I mean, look how yeah. Green see, green. your pumpkin will look like that too. So, I mean, these are all green beans, but they've been picked fifty times over, so they're probably. <gasps> oh, here's one. Look, there's a green bean. That's what it looks like. Yep. That is so cool. Yeah. So we've had plenty of green beans, and then we've got three rows of corn, and that's peaches and cream corn, and that's actually a smaller ear of corn uh -huh. than the great big ones that you get in the store, but it's really sweet and really good. How do you know when it's time to pick the corn? Because up here, the silk, up here at the top, uh -huh. it's black, like this. Oh, okay. And so that means it's ready. Yeah, that silk will get black. So by small, you mean skinny. So that's skinny. Now, okay. We some bigger pieces. Um, I'm I see some see, over there. See, yeah. Uh, this when the silk starts, when the silk starts, it starts like this, and then it blackens up. This probably can actually be picked, but. I let John pick it because he gets PO'd if, 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 you know, if I pick it. But anyway. How do you cook your corn? You just boil it. You boil it? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you put it on the grill because we like to do ours on the grill we, too. We could, I guess. We fry it. Yeah. Bacon grease. Right. <laughs> right. We fry it in bacon grease too, so. Yeah, but look at, look at these blades, Tammy. That haven't, just haven't opened yet. Look how many we're going to have. This will all be sunflowers. And what amazes me is how sticky the leaves Yeah. Are. In Jennifer's house, you can see it up there. Uh, that roof, that red roof. That It's just amazing how bright that is. So Kevin has this. Uh, this is one of the Diamond Dots kits. Um, I don't know if it's that brand or not. I think it is. Uh, but this is the... Um, Baby Yoda Grogu, um, was that his, wasn't that his name? Um, so anyway, he's going to start on this, and uh, I just wanted to show you what it looks like and all the beads you get. He has pulled this table over so that he can work on it while we're watching TV. So this is Kevin's finished diamond dot, and even though I'm putting the footage of this together like like I showed you how he started it and now I'm showing you it completely finished. Uh, that doesn't mean that he finished it all in one day. This was like probably a, a week he worked on this. Every time we would go watch TV, instead of doing his uh, cross stitch because he was finished with that, he would work on this. And I actually told um, our granddaughter that she could have this. So <laughs> I don't even know if she'll keep it or not, but 
um, I told her that she could have it if she wanted it. So she, her room is like um, pink and purple. And so I figured this would look really cute hanging up on her wall. So Kevin finished his needlepoint. This is uh, South Bank and Elizabeth Tower. And uh, he did a beautiful job, absolutely beautiful. It took him a while, but he didn't do it every single night. Uh, usually while, while we're watching TV, uh, he would work on it, but you know, uh, we went on vacation. But I mean, even besides that, um, we just, there were a lot of nights we didn't watch TV, but it still, it just takes a very long time. So we went to Hobby Lobby and we picked out a frame and this frame matches a lot of ones that uh, we already have hanging in our house. So we tried to pick something uh, that would fit in with our house. And then we also picked out a mat. And so, um, It'll cover up. I gotta cut it. But. Kevin has to cut it. Yeah, he's gonna cut it uh, to where he's not covering up any of the picture. But um, we needed to get a bigger, bigger frame. And so, anyway, he's going to, he has his uh, equipment out here to uh, cut this down to size. And when he gets, uh, gets it in there, I'll show it to you again. So we hung Kevin's cross stitch in the hallway and it's right next to the, uh, my collection of my Starbucks mugs. So it uh, is a good eye level so I can see it every time I walk in the bedroom. So today Kevin is going to start on the Terminator. This is a metal earth kit. It is a premium series. It's the T800 endoskeleton. endoskeleton. And this is, let me see if I can get a close up on that. The hardest level you can the do. The hardest level. Have you done one that's the I hardest level? I think I've level? done one more, yeah. Hold on, let me, okay. So I'm gonna show you how this starts out. Kevin's gonna oh, open it, sure. yeah. Because if you're new to the channel, if you've never seen these, you're like, what is a metal art kit? Well, they are flat pieces of metal and they, they become 3D. They become 3D. And um, Kevin's uh, been saving this one for a time where he has some time. This will probably take him several days. Yeah. He, um, it's the thickest instruction book I've ever seen. He, uh, this will take him several <laughs> days to work on. What was the last man you did? Was it a... It Iron, was a robot. Was from, it an Iron Man? No, or, it was or a just, robot from uh, Mandalorian. It was that... It was that killer box. That's right. With the gun. And it took two days. Uh, yeah. So I would say this will take a couple of days as well. And look how little the pieces are. The pieces are really, really small. So this is how it starts out. You have to have a, a lot of patience for these kits. I do not. Uh, you have to be able to follow instructions, at which, you know... You, I, I, I can follow instructions when I want to, but, um, yeah, this is just something, and, and you have to have your vision. I mean, uh, Kevin has a light attached to his computer, um, to his monitor, um, so that he can see, and, uh, it's a lot of little bitty teeny tiny parts, so. And I'm, uh times three glasses reading glasses on so i can actually see them and you also have to be careful too because you have these teeny parts and then kevin will every once in a while he'll it, flick one in the floor oh yeah and it's like oh my gosh where is it in the and floor and i try to keep it over here but sometimes it just drives bounces yeah so it's nice if you have one of these mats great big kind. mats to work on kevin finished the terminator um it's uh, t800 endoskeleton uh, this metal earth and um, it took him a couple days to do um, he uh, he did take a break um, you know for a couple days and he didn't do it like every day straight uh, I'll probably put the footage from from this together though so so you'll see all the footage together because it just makes sense for you to see it you know the way it started to right now uh, but this, um, this was probably the, the, Kevin, would you say this is the hardest one you've ever uh, done? It had the most small details of any of them. Right. So, uh, just know that this is like for people who are advanced, uh, working with these kits. Uh, but I brought some other ones in here to show you the difference in, uh, sizes. So I wanted to show you how big he is. Um, this is how, like, they started. <laughs> the, 
this is like the the size that we're used to and then he has some that are this size and you can see the terminator is still the tallest but the terminator is actually not the tallest one he has the tallest one he has done is actually uh from the mandalorian and that is because um he looks like the uh what's his name from the wizard of oz no, the Tin Man. Yeah, the Tin Man. That's what his hat reminds me of, is the Tin Man. Um, he is actually taller, but Kevin, you would still say the Terminator was much harder than the... Yeah, just because of all the little small details, because the robot was, was detailed. Yeah, I mean, look at the difference in the body. So you can, like, see inside his... Yeah, I don't know if it little... comes through on camera, but then on the back, you can even see... Like the detail down inside his body, whereas this one is is um, just like solid, so like a solid piece. Where this is many, many, many pieces, and even his head um, has a lot more pieces. So I just wanted to show you the difference in sizes because I think it's crazy how these have evolved. But I love them. I think I think they're awesome looking. Um, and his eyes. I don't know if you could see. Um, let me see if I can. It, it does not, this camera does not want to focus on that, that little, metal. yeah, it's all that metal, but his eyes are red in there, so pretty cool. So Kevin is going to work on this Metal Earth kit. Uh, this is probably uh, the easiest one he has right now. Um, this is from uh, Star Wars, and then if he has time, he's going to go ahead and work on this. This is the uh, uh, Big Apple Tour Bus, and I just thought that was really, really cool. And so we'll show you uh, both of them, hopefully, when he gets finished with them. So here are both of these models. I told you I would show them to you. This, uh, the Star Wars model, did not take hardly any time at all. Um, it actually says uh, uh, Lucasfilm on the, the base of it here. Um, it did not take long at all. The bus, I can tell you, took longer because Kevin had to actually... Uh, form each one of these seats. So every single one of those um, had to be formed and, and then there's the little cutout for the stairs in the bus. Um, hopefully you can see the detailing on that. It's a very sturdy bus. Both of us said that. It's very sturdy. Uh, but both of these are nice and uh, so I'm going to add these to his collection. So now Kevin is going to start working on this. This is called Peace Cool, and it is Big Ben. It says Highly Detailed Metal Model Kit, Level 5 Difficulty. So this one actually opens up. So this isn't a Metal Earth Kit. So this opens up, and you can see the metal sheets. They look just like Metal Earth. But let me show you. They have a um, Landmark Series, but then they also have uh, Machines, Fantasy, transport, music, and military. So cool. those, because... I know, I said machines because <laughs> they look like machines. That and the fantasy look pretty cool. Um, the, I think, yeah, the machines and the fantasy look cool to me too. Um, it's www.peacecool.com is their website. Um, I opened this up, Peace Cool. Good job to you for one very thing that I've been telling, I've been saying this about Metal Earth forever. I really wish they would print their map of the sheets separately from their instructions because what Metal Earth does is, okay, so Peace Cool has got it right. Here's the map of the thing. I can always just leave that right there. And then here's the actual instructions. And there's the instructions for building the map, the, the model. What Metal Earth does is it puts the, the sheet like here on the first page or maybe even the second page. They put this map on that page so when I get to the back or I'm, I'm here or, or I'm on the back, I'm having to flip back and forth constantly to figure out what pieces I need. And I've been saying forever they need to print just a separate piece of paper with this um, with this map on there. They did a good job of this. I end up with the Metal Earth a lot of times pulling it up on my computer and having it on my monitor just where I can see the stupid thing. So take, take advantage of this because it's really, really nice. So this is the Big Ben model. It actually says Big Ben on it right here. 
and uh, this is nice. I like it because it's really sturdy. Um, he has another one. I'll bring it in here and show you too. He has another one that's actually the Metal Earth. Um, so let me go get it and we'll compare them. Okay, so this is the Metal Earth version, and it doesn't have the Houses of Parliament. It's just uh, Elizabeth Tower, but it actually says on it, um, I saw it on here. Oh, yeah, right here. In the front, it actually says Big Ben. So, you know, that, uh, like it or not, that is, uh, that is what it's called. But you can see the size. The size is pretty close. Did you realize that, Kev? Mm -hmm. The size is really close. I think your the very tip is a little bent right there. Okay, but I like them both. I actually like the gold one though because it does have the Houses of Parliament with it. Um, but and it's very, it's just very, very sturdy. We got a box that uh, was sent, the items in the box were sent to us from Kevin, Kevin on Instagram. I won't give out his last name, no. not just Kevin. Uh, Kevin on Instagram, I won't give out his last name in case he doesn't want me to, uh, but he ordered us four different bags of chips from a place called Exotic Boulevard. Mm -hmm. So if you want uh, to uh, know, uh, be able to find different snacks, go to this place because they have some cool stuff um i think it's yeah e-x-o-t-i-c-b-l-v-d.com so don't type out boulevard type out b-l-v-d um but he has sent us these are like sun chips they are sun chips hot and spicy and these are a product of korea and then these are lay's max Lay's Max Extreme Cheesy Cheese. <laughs> Extreme Cheesy Cheese. PepsiCo. These are a product of Thailand. And these are uh, Doritos Diablo. Yes, and the Doritos Diablo are from Mexico. Made in Mexico. And these are the Cheetos something. Cheetos like Churros. Chocolate churros yeah. Cheetos Churros is what they're called. And they are probably, let's see, are from Korea. They are from Korea. And a sticker. Oh, we got a sticker, Exotic Boulevard. Pretty cool. So, they have stickers on some of these bags. It's one of, oh, yeah. Not all of them, just some of them. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they put they put their own sticker yeah. on. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much to Kevin for going to this website and thinking of us. And I cannot wait to try these because you know we haven't tried any of them, so that'll be a lot of fun. Today, Kevin's gonna work on this Metal Earth. This is the M1 Abrams tank. And I don't think, I can't tell how hard it's supposed to be because it's behind this paper. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can peel this off and we'll see how hard it is. He was thinking that it wouldn't be too awfully hard. Ah, here we go. So it's like right in the middle, right there. So yeah, it, it, dead in the middle. So it should not take him too long to put this together and I'll show it to you. So here is the tank that Kevin put together and the cool thing about this is the top of it turns and uh, it doesn't turn all the way, but it does turn a lot. And uh, most of these Metal Earth kits do not turn like that. So uh, there it is. All the little wheels. There, that's how it looks on the bottom. It's just a flat piece on the bottom. And then I'll show it to you from the back. I'm going to flush the toilet in the bathroom. Just wait for it. That noise? That noise is coming from the bathtub. It started probably five days ago. 
and we uh, we have some plumbers in Winchester that we really like. We trust them. They've done work for us for years, and uh, we haven't had to call them in quite a while. We had to call. We actually had to have work done almost immediately after moving into this house uh, back in 2012, and uh, we haven't had any issues really. Um, thank goodness. Uh, we do not, you see me in the grocery hauls, I buy the uh, flushable wipes. We do not actually flush them. Those are very, very well known to be a plumber's dream because they, even though they say they're flushable, you are not supposed to flush them. If you Google, just Google it and you'll find out you are not supposed to flush those. So if you use them, and I encourage you, use them whenever you need them, but throw them in the garbage. Do not actually flush them. But we don't flush those. We don't put grease down the drain, like bacon grease, any kind of hamburger grease, whatever. We don't put anything like that down the drain. Yeah, I don't know how long it'll go on, but um, so we, we, I'm sure if you have, if you're a plumber um, or if there's a plumber listening to this, they probably know exactly what that is. Um, we don't have a clue what that is, uh, but we called last week. Uh, but we, you know, it's kind of like with a toothache or something, it starts and you kind of hope that it'll just go away without you having to spend any money on it. It's never the case. It's just going to get worse. So, excuse me. So, it's gotten progressively louder. So, it used to be we would only hear that noise when I would flush my toilet. Now, Kevin can go back in his bathroom and he can flush that toilet and I can still hear it in here in the bathtub. I'll let you know what they say it was, how much it cost, whatever, because you know it's not going to be free a free fix. And I'll let you know what they have to do and all that stuff. Okay, so the plumbers came. And they, the plumber said that the trap was full out at the street. So they told me to call our local municipal company and tell them. So... The plumber wasn't here, not even 10 minutes. So, I don't know how much that'll cost. We'll be billed for that. But he said that it was like our trap out at the street was completely clogged. And so, I guess they're here and they're going to look at it. And they'll probably see me peeking out the window, but that's okay. Um, but he, apparently the plumber opened up the trap out of the street and he said like it blew up everywhere so how embarrassing is that but they said yeah you need to call wmu which is your local municipal company he said because it's full out at the street So today Kevin's going to be working on the AH-64 Apache. Uh, this is uh, another metal earth kit and this one I've kind of started peeling it back here so you can see this one is right there in the middle. So uh, this will probably just take him a couple of hours to do and uh, then I'll show you what it looks like when he's finished. So here is the helicopter, and the neat thing about it is, is the propeller, you can swing the propeller around. Uh, but that, it did not take very long at all, just uh, probably a couple of hours. <laughs> 